What's up guys, it's Cash here, back with another video. Today, I'm going to teach you how to script on Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So, let's get started. First things first, you're going to need Bridge. And Bridge is a really good add-on creation program for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So, once you have this downloaded, now we can start. I'm just going to create a new project. And I'm just going to disable Resource Pack because I'm not going to be using a Resource Pack in this tutorial. That's for custom textures and all that stuff. But I will be using that in a future tutorial. So, stay tuned for that. And then, in Experimental Gameplay, I'm I'm just going to enable beta APIs and nothing else here. Uh, make sure you enable beta APIs or you'll never be able to script in any of your add-ons if it doesn't have it. And now we can disable individual files, both of these because we're not going to use that. Then I'll just set the project name to scripting test and I'll set the project description to just nothing. You can leave that blank. The project prefix, I'll just set that to script and the project author, I'll just put that as my name. Now we'll also turn on add pack name description directly to the manifest so we don't have to do that ourselves. And then if you are putting this add-on on a server, make sure you set project for use with bedrock dedicated servers otherwise your atom probably won't work on your server anyways this is everything you need just for like a normal world so i'll explain what this means so the behavior pack is just how the game behaves and stuff uh, it's like an add-on for how everything works then in experimental gameplay we enabled beta apis what this is is it's just it allows us to use javascript and typescript in our add-ons so it's really simple to use i'll show you in a second but make sure you enable this otherwise your scripts just won't work then in individual files i disabled these because we're just not using them and the project name is just what shows up and the project description is also like what shows up in the behavior packs project prefix um that's a little confusing right now but uh basically it's just like how you you can identify items and stuff like that with your add-on that your add-on made. But yeah, and then the project author, that's just you or whoever's making this. Then we'll just press create. And now our behavior pack and add-on was created. So what we're gonna do is just open main.js. And as you can see, there's nothing in here yet, but we will add some stuff into this. So uh, what we're gonna do is just type console.warn and then main.js loaded, perfect. So now we'll just go and create a new world with this press creative just so it's easy to test you can always make a new world without creative mode and then i'll just name the world scripting test and then we have to enable all the experiments that we put into the add-on so i'm just going to open the project config to check and the only one that we have is enable game test framework and this is just also beta apis game test is what it used to be called but now it's beta apis also in beta apis when the experiment is created it says use dash beta versions of api modules otherwise uh, your modules and stuff won't work so that will also happen we'll get an error like that and i'll show you how to fix that and behavior packs just enable your behavior pack and if you don't see it make sure you have automatic development behavior packs with bridge version 2 otherwise it's not going to work for you and you won't see it here so make sure that this actually shows up in your game otherwise you can ask for help on their discord and there's also some youtube videos and tutorials how to fix that basically it's a feature when you download bridge version 2 so it should automatically do it though now we can just press create and we'll load into our game see if we have any errors and we actually won't have any errors because there's a feature that we have to also turn on so go to settings then go to creator and enable content log file and content log gui this will allow us to see output and errors and all that stuff whenever we're scripting now let's reload into the game and we got an error we have the invalid module versions and the reason for this is because we're not using the beta versions of the modules uh, like it wanted us to in the beta api's experimental feature so go to creator content log history and we can look at this and it says we're requesting the invalid module version in minecraft server 1.0.0 beta uh, as you can see that doesn't actually exist on here so we have to set it to 1.4.0-beta and also 1.2.0-beta. So let's go ahead and do that. Go to manifest and then just change these to what they wanted to be. Then press control S to save and we can leave and rejoin and we'll see if the script works. So if we load back in, as you can see, it says main.js loaded. That means our script is working. Now, if it said main.js doesn't exist or something like that, uh, it just means that you have nothing in main.js or there's no file called main.js in here. Anyways, all, enough of all the complex stuff. Now it's actually time for the good stuff and the simple stuff, which is the scripting. So uh, for scripting, all you have to do uh, to actually make stuff happen, obviously you can't just do like world break and stuff like that you actually have to import the world. Now, this is where many people get confused, but it's really simple. All you have to do is find the dependency right here, and it's at Minecraft server. But just copy this code if you want. I'm gonna import everything as, uh, or import 
as server from the Minecraft server module. And that's it. That's really all we have to do. If you also want, you can copy this and import everything as UI from Minecraft slash server dash UI. And now this is all we need to make a good add-on in Minecraft. So this is like all the scripting stuff that we'll need to have. And we, you don't need anything else pretty much. So now I'm just going to get the world. So constant world equals server dot world just so we can easily just do world dot events and all that stuff. So I want to warn or just put in the output whenever we break a block. So the way we do that is we just do world dot after events dot block break dot subscribe. And then we just set this to a callback just like so. E will just be like the event result. So we can also name this a result if you want. And then what we're going to do is just do console dot warn block was broken. Now, if we just reload our scripts by typing slash reload, as you can see, it says main.js loaded. And then if we break a block, it says block was broken. And it will do this for every single block we have. Perfect. Now we can actually make cooler stuff happen here. Now, I know that seems cool, but what if we want to make it so uh, an entity such as this right here, this entity, um, the sheep, whenever we hit it, we want to make this thing go flying uh, that way, probably. So first things first, we need to get an event for it. So we'll do entity hit, or you can do entity hurt. It doesn't really matter. I'll do entity hit, and then I'll do result dot entity or hit entity, and then we'll do apply knockback. Okay, and what we want to apply the knockback in is we just want to get the actual knockback that we want to apply. So I'll just do let knockback. This will just we'll just make it predefined. So let knockback equals this, and then if we go back here, it says we need a direction x, a direction z, a horizontal strength, and a vertical strength. So I'm just actually just going to copy all of this real quick, just so we can see. And we'll put it in these brackets. And then direction X, this will just be, I guess we'll make this five, direction Z will be five, horizontal strength will be one, vertical strength will be one. And then we'll just apply knockback like this. Now, if we reload the script, we can actually see if that works. Uh, and it says run with error, cannot read property, subscribe if undefined. So it looks like the undefined thing right here is this, entity hit. So maybe entity hit isn't even an event and it's just like lying to us. Um, could be that we'll just reload the script again after we put entity hurt. So maybe that will fix it. And then if we press play, it says cannot read property apply knockback of undefined. So it looks like entity hit entity doesn't work either. So we have to do hurt entity. Now if we reload the scripts and click, it looks like it kind of applied knockback i didn't see it expected four and received one uh now i think the reason for this is because we'll just do knockback direction x knockback direction z isn't there like a there should be like a unpack function or something like that uh, i'm not sure an ar array dot i don't know something like that object dot I'm not the best at JavaScript guys. I'm I just like making these tutorials because I know how Minecraft works. So what I'll do is I'll just I'll just do five five one one. We'll just reload now. So now if we hit this entity or the sheep, boom. And it went flying and got killed. Alright, that's really cool. Now we can do it to the B2. And it went flying. Now that's really fun. So you can just like keep it in the air. We can also uh, make this zero and make it just fly in the air, I think, if we just type slash reload. So now the vertical knockback will be awesome. Now that's really cool. I think um, actually what the Z is, is it just hits it in the direction that you're facing or of uh, the entity that hit it. Actually, no, I think that's just pretty fine. So if we hit it sideways, it's not going to do that. but. That's really cool. It sends him flying into the air. Um, if we also make that zero, I think we can reload. And if we just spawn like a something cool, like a zombie or a creeper uh, right here. And then we punch it. Yeah, it just makes it fly up in the air. So that's really awesome. We could also probably make it uh, be negative knockback. 
negative strength maybe so it goes down into the ground that could be kind of cool type slash reload and hit it and no it's just the exact same but that's still really cool we can make things go really high and this works for enti any entity so what if we want to make it only work for something like a donkey right here the way you do that is you just have to check if the donkey or if the entity that's being hit is a donkey so we'll do if result dot her entity is e or dot type id is equal to minecraft donkey then we'll just apply the knockback if we reload that now and we punch this thing boom it goes high but if we hit something like a creeper as you can see it doesn't have that knockback so you can also just check if you're hit hitting something like a donkey and then it'll go really high and that's really cool you can also make like a lot more knockback if you want it to be on like a player if you're making like a pvp world that would be really cool too uh but yeah so there's like really cool stuff like events like this we can even do like ui so if you after events uh then we can do like a item used so we'll do item use on or not use on we'll just do item use subscribe and we'll just do the exact same thing that we did with the other event up here and we'll check if the uh, item that we're using if the type id is equal to minecraft compass then we'll just do result dot source and then we will i guess this would be cool if we could like we could apply knockback to us if we use a compass or we could like make like a leap um just like high the hive leap um on that server so it'll just make us go high up in the air so what we'll do is i'll do apply knockback zero zero one one so it's just the exact same as that uh, minecraft leap wouldn't work uh, i'll just do feather my bad and we'll reload the scripts again and now we can find the feather uh, where is that at i'll just search it up oh wait i have one in my hand what am i doing all right as you can see we can leap now with a feather and that's actually really cool it's just like the hive um, we could also make it go in the direction that we're facing and the way you do that is you just apply the knockback at the result head location i think you can do so let's try this out apply knockback um result dot source dot get head location we'll do this so const head location equals this and then we'll do head location dot x and then head location dot z then this will just be zero this will be one okay now if we reload and we go and punch this sheep or not the sheep i think if we just use this um it's making us it's making us like go up if we reload it i think yeah yeah so it's making us just go up in the head location i think let's uh lower that and see if that does it yeah yeah so that was just that and then um maybe it's get velocity oh get view direction that could do it let's try this slash reload um maybe it's not knockback maybe we should do apply impulse this could work and then we'll just do head location dot x uh well actually it's a vector three so we'll just do this right here x equals head location dot x y equals head location dot y z equals head location dot z uh, and that way we don't have to create a new vector no maybe it is entity we'll, no so maybe the arrow we can just do equals world dot get to mention overworld dot spawn entity and then the entity will be a uh, arrow so minecraft arrow and then the the location could just be the head location or actually we'll just do impulse i guess because it's the exact same thing uh, and then we'll just apply the impulse to the arrow okay so let's try this and fail to call function spawn entity um, maybe the maybe the arrow is the thing so is it 
not Minecraft arrow, maybe we just put arrow. Yeah, I don't know why. That's really weird. Anyways, these are really cool. We can also make it open a UI form. So we'll just do constant form equals UI dot action form data like this equals new action form data. And then we can do dot body or actually dot title uh, teleport locations and then dot button we'll do base and then then we'll show this to the player so the result dot source there we go now if you reload you should be able to open a ui form it says teleport locations that's really cool so yeah we can open a teleport location ui and then we'll be able to teleport now how do we actually teleport we can just do result.source or not result the source my bad uh we'll do form dot then so when the result is fulfilled so then we'll just do fulfilled equals this and then we'll do fulfilled dot selection so let selection equals this now i'm not the best at javascript so please uh please don't criticize my code here but i'll do if selection actually you know uh, I'm I'm too good for that I, I'm too good for making this bad code what I'll do is I'll just do const and then locations equals this and actually we'll just make this an array and then we'll do um, 0 50 0 this one will be like a hundred hundred zero and then now that we have these two locations we'll do let location equals locations selection if location then we'll do result dot source dot run command async and then we'll do uh put it with like these little things we'll do teleport at s to location there we go and then we'll also add just uh, one more location we'll do dot button mine or something there we go now if we reload, we should have a whole entire teleport GUI. We can teleport to the base, teleport to the mine, ah! And, yeah, it actually looks not that bad. Um, it still is really bad. We can actually just put this right here, uh, all the way up here. And then we can just show it with like form.show result.source. There we go. And that also still works. And it says not a function main.js35 uh where is that i don't think there even is a main.js35 i don't even know why it's saying that whatever uh it works so i don't really care uh, i'm still gonna put this down here though i think that was like the error maybe yeah it was uh but yeah so this is pretty cool you can do a lot of fun stuff with this and i'll actually make another tutorial on this very soon so if you want anything specific you want me to make anything like cool or specific i'll also get into model form datas next time but this is just simple scripting how to set everything up and this will be part one i'll see you guys in the next video make sure to subscribe and join my discord server peace